So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the tongue, but just to kind of get everybody a reference point of what we're looking at. This is the trachea that would carry air into your lungs. So this is your larynx. That would be where your voice box is. And you can actually see the folds in there, the vocal folds right in here. And then this is your epiglottis. And so we can divide the tongue into the body of the tongue, which is the main portion of the tongue here. The tip of the tongue is called the apex. The sides of the tongue are referred to as margins. And the root of the tongue is what we're seeing here. So it makes this tongue look really large compared to what you're used to seeing in someone's mouth because we usually don't see the root of the tongue, which is this part of the tongue. So what we want to do uh, in this unit is for focus on the sensory apparatus that's on the tongue. And then when we do the digestive system, we'll go back and we'll talk about uh, much of the other anatomy of the tongue. Um, and so what I'm going to do is turn this tongue around. So what we're going to focus on now is the sensory apparatus within the tongue. Uh, and then relate it back to some of the nerves that we've, we've learned as well. So your tongue is really rough because you manipulate food with it unknowingly between your teeth. And so one, thing, one way you could demonstrate the activity of your tongue is to eat a wet a white bread peanut butter sandwich and it sticks right to the roof of your mouth. And your tongue is what stuck it to the roof of your mouth because your tongue usually uses the roof of your mouth to manipulate food with. So to do that, the tongue is loaded with real fine little upward projections. So upward projections are called papillae and the real fine upward projections that cover most of the tongue are called the filiform papillae. And they contain taste, they do not contain taste buds, but they contain sensory apparatus for pressure, for temperature, and for feel. So that's what your tongue uses to know where the food is on it any time for manipulating it. So we have other projections that we see on our tongue. So near the apex of the tongue, if you look closely, you can see some uh, larger round looking ones. And if we looked at them from the side, they would actually look like a mushroom. So they're called fungiform papillae. And so they're on the dorsum of the tongue, interspersed on the dorsum of the tongue. If you look at the sides of the tongue, there are some fine folds on the sides of the tongue that we can see here on the margin of the tongue. And so those are called folate papillae. And then we have a, a V of large round uh, projections on the tongue near the root of the tongue right here. And so they're called valate or circumvallate papillae. So uh, filiform papillae do not contain taste buds, but fungiform papillae, folate papillae, and circumvallate papillae all contain taste buds. So if we divide our tongue into thirds, then the anterior two-thirds of the tongue is done by the facial nerve, and the posterior third of the tongue is done by the glossopharyngeal nerve. So the facial nerve does most of the, of the fungiform papillae and the folate papillae, and the glossopharyngeal does all of the circumvallate papillae. And that way we have that way we have redundancy. So if we had nerve damage to one, we would still have taste. We think of taste as pleasurable uh, when you eat something that's really good, like a deep dark chocolate pie or something. But really taste is critical to preventing you from eating food that's rotting or spoiling that would make you very sick. And so it was critical for most of our history to, to have this redundancy so that we could be a protective measure uh, for ourselves.